Hello, Warriors, and welcome back to Spartan Down Under. Today, we are joined by Head Cryptaea for Extreme Endurance, Spartan Australia, New Zealand, and Fiji, Mick Stewart. Mick, tell us a bit about yourself, who you are, and what you do. How are we going? Yeah, so Mick Stewart, I'm Head of Spartan Australia for the Cryptaeas, Head of Crypto for Spartan Endurance, where I program all the, come up with all the fun stuff for hurricane heat, ranging from 4, 12, and 24 hours. And when I'm not doing that, I'm a human performance coach that specializes in resilience and longevity. Um, using my platform Uncaged, I tell people either getting back into becoming weekend warriors again or actually getting um, to do more resilient, more challenging events that are coming up or train people who are getting ready for army and special forces. Amazing. And obviously, you are the head cryptaya for Extreme Endurance. What actually is an extreme endurance race or hurricane heat and how is it different to a Spartan race? So hurricane heat, um, it's way different than a race. Main factor is, I always tell people with a race, you're in control of the output, how you're gonna do it, how you're gonna approach everything, how you get through the race. You, with a race, you can be doing anywhere from, if you're fast, a 5K could take you 40, 50 minutes to two hours. Whereas with a hurricane heat, the time is the time. Doesn't matter if you're the fastest, the slowest, the strongest, or the weakest. It is going to be a four hour event, 12 hour or 24 hour event, unless you decide that you want to quit and you don't want to do it. Otherwise, you're going to that, that the time is the minimum. And unlike racing, where you can sort of predict a little bit what might be there with the race maps and everything, with the hurricane heat, it is. Generally pure chaos, structured chaos actually, is the way to say it, where we're going to challenge you and take away that whole, you know what's coming next, which then gives people that chance to sort of have to dial in their own way of coming up with adversity and how to challenge each obstacle as it comes, rather than when a race, you know that there's a certain amount of obstacles and you know what's coming ahead. So we actually dictate your output rather than you and you have to sort of adapt on the fly yeah so it's definitely i think they both have their challenges um but hurricane heat is i guess it it is so much out of your control and i feel like there's a lot of i got to watch the hurricane heat in picton uh 2023 um and i feel like it's a lot of like not just physical challenges, but also like mental challenges and teamwork as well. That's one thing I love about like the hurricane heats is I always tell people that's where you really get that sense of Spartan community because if you can come in, you might be the fittest person, but someone who might be really quick and have a sharp mind on them also has a big part to play because every mission we give out during the hurricane heat, some will be physically based where you might need to be asked help. Like, for example, at the Picton one we just had, they had to run up this hill and get a whole bunch of tires at the top because we needed the six full car. <laughs> and so one of the things that happened was a couple of the members were slow up that hill. So members came, the participants came back down, grabbed their bags. So they're now running up with two bags carrying anywhere from 10 to 15 kilos of weight plus gear and uh, to help the slower members. So it really gives you that sense of community and being part of something. And the whole point about it is it doesn't matter if you're the fitter people, we want you to bring up the slower people. And if you're the smarter people, we want you to help the people that can't quite get the problems we give up later. And that's it. everyone has a place and everyone learns to use their strengths, recognize their weaknesses, but also learn to ask for help. Yeah, which I think is really good because it's it's not only something that can be used in obviously the actual hurricane heat and the races themselves, but like stuff that you can just use in everyday life. It is such a thing, I think, a stigma for people of that fear of asking for help because you know you want to look like you know what you're doing but you also don't know what you don't know absolutely and that's one thing we pride ourselves about the hurricane heat is after they have a saying for at the race you'll know at the end for a hurricane heat we say the end is just the beginning we tailor our hurricane heats to have messages and to help people to the point that gold coast last year we talked about how trolleys get left out. When you go to the shopping center, there's trolleys left everywhere. And we just, we find it's a sign of laziness, not finishing the job. And one of the evolutions we did was carry, finish the job for the, for the build crew of putting some stuff away for the next um, obstacles for the next day. I'm 
get messages all the time from fellow student, students students that have done that now and they still show me them putting trolleys away and doing other things and taking more pride and that's what i mean we do stuff that when we finish we actually take it with our lives as well take it into our daily life and helps so many more people reach new highs best way to put it new highs and new ways of how they approach their daily lives yeah absolutely i think it, it's so great and that's one of the things that i love most about spartan and extreme endurance and really all of the aspects of spartan is it's things that you can take um into everyday life and i think that's part of you know when people look at spartan from the outside uh, you just think it's kind of like this crazy challenge really and like it definitely is but it opens a lot within yourselves, I think, um, and gives you opportunities just to be the, the best version of yourself and make for a better way of living as well, which I think is fantastic. And I mean, what got you started with Spartan and Extreme Endurance? Um, well, funny story, funny enough, I uh, actually, my first Spartan race was in 2013 when they had the first Picton race the first sprint and then they had the super up at brisbane and they had the beast and ultra beast down at Picton again so i got into that after having my own little weight loss journey where i used to be about 100 150 kilos 150 150 kilos and then i got down to 94 kilos so i became a trainer and got into that whole fitness and health and then my family members bought me tickets for the spartan race and i knew nothing about it so I went in feeling a little cocky about myself because I'm a trainer, I lift weights, <laughs> realized and that did not carry over into Spartan racing at all. And that got, because I got my butt absolutely handed to me, I loved it. It was like, yes, this is humbling and showed how just being gym fit and being life fit are spectrums apart. So I started just working on Spartan. Then I got in, yeah, did my first trifecta that year. Um, continued racing for many years to come until finally, um, my predecessor, who was in charge of the Hurricane Heat, Rich, was looking for people to start building the Hurricane Heat team because I think he, he was doing it on himself, him and Yosti. So I applied for applications, jumped into the Hurricane Heat and so started loving them even more because every time I'd be out on racing, I used to always help someone. I always, if you found someone in trouble, I'd love to pick them up and help them out and that's how it was. And then when I went to this Hurricane Heat and started doing my first one at Ivory Falls, up the up at um, Brisbane, it was amazing just doing all these stuff that I wasn't the fastest, but I was the strongest and I made up with it those ways. I was able to carry people. At one point there was this really big dude and he thought no one could carry him. So come on, get on my back. And I took him up this hill with me and I stuck with him the whole night when he was struggling until we got through it. And to that bond was made, he was an all, he loved it. He thought that was great, it helped us. Was very thankful for that and through that, getting to know Richmore, he said, you want to come on staff and start working with us? And then started my road coming into the whole Cryptea and learning to be on the other side of the hurricane heat, why we do the evolution, the missions and that, what's the goal, what are we trying to do? And through that, then started doing it more often. And finally he was ready to change his, change what he wanted to do because he started his business Risky Kids and was really focused in on that. So. He and I'll put my name down to take the head role position and I've been doing that ever since and it's just been so much fun. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's definitely everyone has such a different, like a vastly different but very similar experiences with getting into Spartan. It's kind of like you do it one time and then you're kind of like, oh, this actually there's this challenge but there's also this amazing community and you then kind of just want to keep pushing yourself to like the next challenge and the next challenge just to see how far you can go because there is that whole idea of you don't know until you try it. you don't know what you're capable of until you actually get out there and try it and I mean obviously you are a cryptea but what does it actually mean to be a cryptea and how do you become one? So the Cryptea comes from basically in Spartan times, the Cryptaeas were the teachers. They trained the Spartan warriors and the kids in the schooling to become the Spartans, come to become, become Spartans. So we've used that philosophy and that's what we do for Hurricane Heat. We try to teach them things as we talked about and we try to grow people and elevate them, not just the traditional thought of being in a boot camp and yelling and just giving a beat down. It's, we're trying to actually grow people and 
help them experience new potential within themselves. And that's one thing I really love about the whole Spartan Cryptaya process of how you become a Spartan Cryptaya. Generally, there's several different ways. Me personally, we like to actually go from, we start in-house. So all our, we get our people that are generally coming to do hurricane heat and regular love it because they're already built into the brand. They know what it's like they have. And through that, if they show great leadership, community through it all, willing to push themselves, but also bring someone up with them. And we think they're just the great, like Rob Cardillo, he's been a part of the doing hurricane heats for years. And this year we decided to ask if he wanted to come join us that was because he's always someone who's first in there to put his best in, but then he's also got one or two people on his back that he's bringing up with him. He's always quick to help during HH and outside. So with that, we then have a process where we sign and do an application. And then if the application's all good, we then have to do ourselves a coaching course with HQ. And then we have to do a fitness test. Now this fitness test is one thing why I fell in love with her, with um, crypto, being a crypto, because it keeps us accountable. Every two years you have to do this as a minimum. I try to encourage we do it every year with my with my staff, but it keeps you accountable in keeping your fitness and your mind sharp. So you've got to do like a 21K ruck run. You've got to do um, max effort push-ups in a minute, max effort pull-ups, a 5K run, and a 5K sprint, um, and like 10 minutes worth of burpees, just so basically keeping ourselves physically so we're not just talking the talk, we actually walk as well. Yeah. And through that, after you, that's all approved and you've passed all those things, then you get to shadow for about a year uh, at their various events, which then if you everything looks good and you're showing that you're active, you're participating, you're helping make the experience better, then you become a level one. And through that, then that means you can run a four hour. Then we have level two for a 12 hour, level three for 24 hour. And then finally, level four is for a gogi level. So that way there's always this chance to level up, which is great. And that's one thing I really love about it. It's not just, here you go, you've got it. Now you can just have your bragging rights and that you've got to keep earning it every year. So you keep yourself accountable. And that's one thing I really just love about being the crypto and the stuff we have for it. Yeah, no, definitely. Because I think it's something that there are certain, there is a certain way, I think, or well, not like a specific way, but I feel like a, a certain person to actually be a cryptaya and to run those kind of events because it is not just about beating people down it is kind of pushing them to their limits but in a way that's actually encouraging them to do so rather than like you're bad do better which is not encouraging at all um but i feel like it you learn so much kind of as you do that you kind of learn and I think starting small as well with something like a four hour, which is not small, but you know, it, the smallest of the options and learning actually what people respond to and what works and what doesn't work before you get up to something like a, a 12 hour and 24 hour, which are just like massive tolls physically and mentally. So like kind of being ready and prepared to do that. So I think that's so great that it's not kind of just like, here you go. Now you can do it all. It actually is, you know, over time you learn and you grow with your team as well and kind of learn how people will respond, which is I think just fantastic because I feel like you could so easily get someone that just doesn't necessarily understand how that works and kind of come at it from the completely wrong mindset as well. If they would just like jump straight into like a 24 hour. Oh yeah, we definitely, that's one thing I love about the four hour most of all, like the four hour is where, the community, the camaraderie is all built. 12 and 24, they're great events, but they're also a different format. You do get the headstrong machos who think they could just jump straight in. And that's why I love about the fact we make some very mental sides of it. Like last year at the 12 hour, we had them doing, trying to solve Lego <laughs> and that do a Lego puzzle but the instructions were at the top of the hill. So they had to run up, try and memorize it or write it or think outside the box of how they're going to memorize and come down. And you saw some of the guys that would just leg it up there, come back down and be like, Oh, I forgot because they were fit enough to do it until they realized, wait, let's try and do not, let's try another method of memorizing, writing down their arms and stuff like that with their pens. And that's what I love about it is it makes you think outside the box, but it also had some of our members who would go up there 
and they were really good at memorizing. So they would take their time and come down and they'd do a lot more of the Lego pieces because they were very strong mentally about memorizing what the instructions were. And then that's the stories everyone talks about. And they all, when they meet each other, catch up at another Spartan event and they're doing, before they've even done another hurricane heat, they're out on course running and just talking about what they did last time, what they're thinking they're gonna be doing this time. And that's what I really love, especially about the four hours because it builds that big Spartan community or storm chasers as we like to call them. And once you're a storm chaser, you know your other storm chasers, you know everyone on a different level. And that's what's so much fun. You see it when you hear it when they're in the, the festival, you know, yelling hurricane heat, hurricane heat, all that sort of stuff. And it's one thing I really just love seeing and hearing about. Yeah, I think that's something I definitely saw when I came and watched last year in Picton was um, they were doing like the puzzle pieces and there were people like sprinting back and forth versus there was people that were like as a collective, they kind of came up with a strategy because you could only bring three pieces back at a time and you couldn't leave them there and go back and get more you only you had to put them down in place and then once they were in place they had to stay there um and the people like just like running back and forth grabbing random pieces whereas there were teams that kind of strategized and went we're gonna go a bit slower but make sure that things actually match up also before they get there so they could just put them in place and then go back and get more instead of getting there and trying to be like none of it fits so I don't know where any of it goes and then just putting it down regardless of if it's correct or not yeah that was a lot of fun that one yeah didn't help them the best part about that was yeah actually it, they had the guys who were quicker would run and back and they had the people that could actually strategically put a puzzle into people that were just puzzle wizards I think they got out of those seven puzzles they had to do and they got six and a bit done six and a half of them done yeah. Without you didn't, yeah. No, it was really good. And it's really cool to watch as well everyone's different kind of, I guess, mindsets going into that. Like some are really going for speed and some are really just going for like very methodical. So it's also great to see like different people working together. But I mean, something that's, I guess, a little off topic, but what do you like to do in your downtime when you're not training, when you're not preparing for an event? Uh, well, I live in the country, so I like to keep things simple. I... For me, if I'm not planning Spartan events or trying to train or everything, it's a case of I like to go bow hunting. And I, I, like, I do traditional bow hunting to provide meat for the family. It's just a fun little thing I've been doing recently and really enjoying. Uh, hang with my, play with my daughter. Like I've got a two year old girl and she is like my world. She's the reason I do a lot of the things I do now as well. Uh, and play rugby with couple of boys play rugby union for the local club just generally keeping active or reading and studying on new ways to just push you in potential yeah absolutely because i think <laughs> that you know spartan is wonderful and it can be your whole life but it's kind of something that i find actually uh, crosses a lot of lines with theater as well which is like a weird conjunction and if listeners didn't already know I am a performer so that's why I'm bringing this up um but this thing of like it's your life and it's your livelihood but it doesn't necessarily have to take all of your life you are still allowed to do things outside of that that also bring you joy and might be in the same vein but are not you know specifically you're not necessarily doing it specifically to prepare yourself for an event so I think it's a great like going out and like playing sport for for fun but it's also like it's like you know it's like a double-edged sword it's for fun but you're it's also helping to keep you active and i'm sure chasing after a a, a two-year-old girl is also something that keeps you probably very active as well oh yes she's definitely always on her feet running around especially now that she loves chasing everything and anything in the dogs but that's what i love about it she makes everyday fun and even playing with her has helped come up with ideas to bring in evolutions and stuff like that. But yeah, no, she's been the best thing. Um, anyone that knows me knows how much I talk about my daughter and how that is my one big thing that's keeping me focused and keeps me honest to keep myself going as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it would be so great being surrounded by, I guess, the um, the childlike whimsy to kind of give you ideas for kind of things. Because I feel like, you know, as we grow up, we we lose that a little bit and it's great to have those little reminders of what it was like and then being able to actually incorporate that into events and just like she has her own little 
her own little sprinkle that she gets to add to events as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, so you have the Extreme Endurance Weekend coming up in July. What can, obviously, without giving anything away, what could participants expect from that weekend? Well, the first thing they gotta, they're gonna, they can expect is it is three different events. So I know this is what I've been talking a lot of people think people were thinking you pay for the 24 and it's the 412 and then 20, and 24 in one big cycle. No, it is just like a normal trifecta that you do the sprint, super and beast. Well, in this case, we do the four hour, we get a bit of a break, then we do the 12 hour, then there's a little bit of, a, there's another break and then we go into the 24 hour. So it's a 40 hour hurricane heat is the best way to look at it with some breaks in between. There's going to be everything and anything in this one. I'm so excited about this. This has been like in the makings for about two years now for me. <laughs> it's going to be one of the most scenic ones we've had. We've got beautiful Kinkumba location, which has beachfront and some beautiful terrain and trails just where they had the trail race. So we'll be utilizing all aspects of that. There's going to be, you're going to get to see a whole lot of different, different time zones, different time as well, like sun, night all those beautiful parts. and really it's also going to be a little bit of collaboration from what we've been doing at bright at picton and gold coast all these elements are going to actually show up in the trifecta weekend so it builds it up as a sort of one gets people ready for it because we've got a few people that are jumping in to do this because they want to go do death race which is like the on the spartan mountain they have it goes you've got all the races and then you've got the hurricane heat and then you've got death race as the peak of the spartan mountain so we've got elements like that to test everyone on both physical and mental level really i'm just really excited for it it's me and the boys are training for ourselves because we're also going to have to be up for all those times as well if not then some and it's going to be a really awesome event something that i talking around i don't think we've had anything like this in australia yet where like we've had races that have gone for 24 hours and stuff like that, but those are races where you, again, you dictate the output. This is going to be a, you can either sign up for the four, you can sign up for the 12, the 24 or all three, but everyone is going to have some elements that are just going to make it just a memorable weekend as well. Yeah. It sounds like kind of the epic challenge really, because it is, like you said, it's not, People will probably assume that it is all three kind of combined, that if you sign up for the 24, it kind of takes place over all of those periods. But no, they are all separate. But it's going to be epic, really. And that's, that's really the only way I can think to describe it. I've heard you and Bull talking about it incessantly for a couple of months, really, since I've joined the company. Um, and it's something that I can't wait to kind of see. I will not be participating in this one because I unfortunately will be away that weekend. Uh, that definitely wasn't an intentional booking or anything. Um, but it sounds just, just phenomenal. And I guess, what would you say to our listeners to encourage them to join you for the Extreme Endurance Weekend or the next Hurricane Heat? Well, yeah, I say get amongst it. Like uh, for for your races and your people, as I was so, so picked and I was talking a lot about this. Gold Coast Hurricane Heat is going to be a great one for people who wanna who are very competitive, want it, they're age cats or elites and stuff, and they want they're, they're doing their a, they're doing APAC and stuff. Gold Coast will be a perfect weekend to sort of jump in the hurricane heat and use it as a resilience weekend because you're never going to be as tired as you are if you do a beast on the Saturday, hurricane heat, and then have to back up doing a sprint and super on the Sunday. That's going to give you more tools in the toolbox for your hurricane um, because, yeah, you're never going to be more exhausted than that. As for the trifecta weekend, as this has never been where not only is it the first time we're doing a 24 hour hurricane heat in Australia, this is the first time there's all three available. And the beauty part about it is you, again, it sounds like a lot, but if you come in focusing only on every little element first before you end get, you can actually be surprised how far you go. And again, if more tools in the toolbox, the resilience factor goes through the roof once you've competed on these, you can realize how in a stressful environment you can control yourself and manage yourself a lot better. 
and I mean, you're going to get to see these beautiful sunrises on the beach. So there's all that fun stuff as well, while doing some other stuff that might not seem as fun at the same time. If you don't get to this, you don't know, the next one's not going to be at a beach like this. So I'd say get on it now while you can, because they're always going to be changing. And as one of my storm chasers said, he can't wait for it because he at least wants to be the first one there to do it. And that's always the first trifecta the hurricane hits. No one, if, even if that's your bragging rights, I did the first trifecta hat. That um, in Australia, why not get amongst it? Isn't it? That's definitely something that I feel like I've heard from so many people that have already signed up is it's that thing of like, oh, like I want to be the, one of the first people to do it. It's not even like that. I want the physical challenge. It's like that. No, I want, I want bragging rights. I want to be able to say that I was there to do it. Um, and I think that's that's a great motivator, I think. And I mean, if you're not necessarily going to be looking at doing the Extreme Endurance Weekend, come and do the four-hour hurricane heat in Queensland that I'm apparently doing since now Bull has said it in front of enough people that I don't think there's any way for me to get out of that. Uh, so come suffer with me. But I think something that you said that was really great uh, and I couldn't agree more with, it is to focus on kind of each individual task kind of along the way. Cause when you focus on like this massive end goal, like for me, even four hours, I'm like, that's so long and that's really intimidating. But when I stop and kind of think about since watching the hurricane heats and kind of going, okay, well just, we just focus on each task kind of as it comes up rather than looking at this end goal. Um, it kind of, you kind of get to it before you even realize that it's like happened and you kind of are like, Oh, and it's, and it's done. It doesn't mean it's not going to be physically challenging, but when you kind of take it in your stride, each individual challenge as it comes up, you get to the end and you're like, oh, I've, I've done it. It's done. Oh, yeah. That's the biggest part of now. So everyone, like we had a beautiful collection, this a Picton, where we had a half and half. And the amount of people that were like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to last four hours again. It's like, no, just show up, start at the beginning. A perfect example of this, what this trifecta weekend you could be, is we're now trip in Italy. When me and Bull went to go to Italy to get our level threes, we finished the 12 hour with a Australian special style of a mission, which actually saw the eight people that did all three were almost were ready to quit after the 12 hour. And all we said, we had a chat with them, we got them breathing, said eat, let's have a quick sleep, show up, come to the starting point and don't think anything past each mission. And they ended up going through and finishing the 24 hour after they were ready to quit at the end of the 12 and had for the Italian one had, that was their, their, their number eight, their eight top eight that it finished all three of them. And that's, so it is doable to do all three, but if it's a four hour, if it's a 12, 24, if it's all of them, the main part is just show up to the start and don't think anything past that because you don't know what's going to come up. Only me. Bull, my staff, they know what's coming up because I've told them, but generally no one knows what's coming up. So don't even try and do that. Just show up and be prepared to have an experience. Yeah, I think that's the best way to go into something like this or into anything really is to show up and to just try, really, to just try your best. Um, don't doubt yourself so much. I know that it's super easy to do that, but try to just have a little bit of faith in yourself and I think especially when you're surrounded by so many like-minded people as well it makes that just a little bit easier but we have come to the end of our interview for today so thank you so much for taking the time to come on and chat to us about extreme endurance and about the extreme endurance weekend and like you said like I said listeners uh, I will put all of the details for the extreme endurance weekend down below and as well I will put details for upcoming races um I think the next one when this comes out uh, will be Queensland if not it will be the extreme endurance weekend but before we go Mick give yourself a little bit of a plug where can people find you on social media uh so basically best place to find me is Mick underscore uncaged on Instagram or Mick Stewart on Facebook. Uh, always happy to help out even if you've got questions or you just want to know more about it. I'm happy to always help as much as I can without giving too much away. Or if you need to get a hold of me that's to do some work with with the with my own cage brand, that's 
there as well. Amazing. Well, thank you so much again for taking the time to chat to us today. And listeners, make sure that you hang around for the deep brief. But until next time, make sure to follow at Spartan Down Under Podcast on Instagram to get all the latest updates on races and guests. But until then, keep conquering challenges. G'day, Warriors, and welcome back to the debrief. Today, I am joined by Bull, who I'm sure most of you will already know. He is the head official and a senior cryptaya, but to me, he is commonly known as Dad. Um, so he will be joining us today for the debrief as we discuss our fantastic conversation that we just had with Mick Stewart, who is the head of Extreme Endurance Australia, New Zealand and Fiji, about the upcoming Extreme Endurance Weekend. It's going to be a very exciting weekend. And I think to kick it off, kind of, I think one of the first things that people need to know is this is the first time this is happening in Australia. It's going to be the first time there'll be a 24 hour event in Australia. So there'll be the four hour, the 12 hour and the 24 hour endurance, endurance race events. So do you have some more information for us, Paul? Uh, well, look, first off, what what did you take away? So Mick Stewart, the uh, the race director for Extreme Endurance Australia, New Zealand, uh, Fiji, and also the uh, the head cryptaya. Um, what did you think about what he had to say about the uh, the upcoming weekend? Look, I think the main thing that I took away from it is, like I said, it's the first time it's happening in Australia, so there is a bit of notoriety about those that will be participating, and that they will be the first people in Australia to participate in one of these events in Australia. Um, I think as well, the what I took out of it for extreme endurance in general is it's kind of the next step up for Spartan. They say that, you know, at the finish um, for extreme endurance, you say the finish is just the beginning. Um, and I think that that is such a huge thing. I feel like you can learn so much from doing a Spartan race. Um, and then that is kind of made tenfold when you do an extreme endurance event um, because mm-hmm. extreme endurance is very much so completely out of your control. With a Spartan race, there is a start, there is a finish. You know that there are 20 plus obstacles along the way. Extreme endurance, you have no idea Mm -hmm. what it is. And it's not just about your own personal level of fitness. It is also about your teamwork and kind of your personal morals and ethics and how you believe things should be done. Um, So I think that's a huge part for a lot of people and I think that the four hour is a great place also for people to start whether they've done a Spartan race or not um, you might lag behind in some of the physical areas of this event however it is so much about team and your team bringing you along the way and working together which I think is a huge part I think it's always been something that's a little bit more off-putting to me mm-hmm. yeah I know the, one of the big things too with the, the hurricane heat is preparation so having the right equipment, um, having your gear sorted out so that you know where everything is, uh, is those people who sort of just throw all their equipment in the bottom in their pack and then just, you know, we say, okay, we want your, your head torch and they've got to go through, go through, find everything. And no, you want to be able to put your hand on stuff and pull it straight out. So that preparation is really good, um, you know, but also the four hour learning from those other storm chasers who are around you who are, um, who have been at uh, multiple um, multiple events because you know, they will also help you along. So, you know, you've got to ask questions and that kind of stuff. Um, and speaking about questions, we've had um, some questions coming in on the social media and on the event page. Um, one of the big ones has been um, the exact location for the um, the exact location for the event. Okay. So um, there's a, I think the uh, nine kill care road is the, um, is the space the place that's actually on the, um, the registration form. My recommendation is you look up the Putty Beach campsite um, through the National Parks and Wildlife Service and book a campsite. Okay. So book a campsite there. That will be the best location for you to be. There are no um, commercial um, accommodations, no commercial accommodation in Kilcare itself, uh, which is directly east of um, Gosford. Um, so you're going to want to have a, a campsite there, and it's the closest place to the start. So at the spot there, uh, at the spot there at the campsite, you've got uh, 24 hour toilets, you've got cold water showers, um, you've got potable water, so drinkable water. Um, and you've also got um, barbecues available. I think they're gas barbecues available with a, a cover over them so you can cook food in between um, the events. So there is that. 
Um, so that's um, that's a big one. And you'll also need to actually pay for the National Parks and Wildlife Service parking. So that's you know it's a, it's a daily it's a daily rate, and it's I don't know how much it is, but it's uh, it's quite it's not substantial. You just pay for that, and there's actually the ticket machines there. So uh, as I said, Putty Beach campsite. Um, and National Parks and Wildlife Services, where you can book that. You can book that online. And I feel like for you, what are some of the challenges that you're looking forward to for having this, you know, full endurance weekend? It is three full days, the four hour, the 12 hour, the 24 hour. And like, what can people be prepared for other than not being prepared? Look, I think the biggest thing I'm actually looking forward to is having the elite and the pro racers coming to this event. Because normally we have the four hours at a uh, like a trifecta event or a you know, a sprint super etc. And you get people who go, look, I want to do it, but I, I'm concentrating on my races. So I'm concentrating mm. on the trifecta. Yeah. I want a podium, things like that. So they want to get their age group and that. Whereas this, because it's a standalone event, there's no excuse. I know that uh, the head cryptayer, uh, Mick, has a habit occasionally of calling out the uh, the elite races and saying, come on, you guys, you're supposed to be the best of the best. Why are you not coming to an extreme endurance event? You know, you'll come and you'll do an ultra or you'll do the beast and that, but you won't come to a four-hour hurricane heat. So now there's no excuse. And I know that we've got uh, a few of the competitors. I know that Sam Gilchrist is one who's um, who's coming and uh, she, um, she got a couple of podiums uh, at the Gold Coast for the trifecta. So she's coming and I believe she's nervous as hell, which is yeah. to be expected because you don't know what's coming. But some of the big things I'm looking forward to is um, when people start to understand it's, especially the four hour, it's, it's more of a teaching. It's more of a learning experience. You know, you, you learn about yourself and purely I'm a mirror. So we'll, we'll go through some things and you will just be mirroring what their attitudes are. I mean, you know, they'll be worried about what's coming. Life is unpredictable. You, you can't predict life. You know, life will just throw you curveballs all the time. There's only three things, and I, and I bring this up in, in all the hurricane heats, there's only three things in life that we can actually control. That's our character, that is the way we treat other people, and the way re we respond to situations, right? So what we're doing is actually showing people what their character is really like when they're under stress, when they're in a in a situation that they can't control, mm. you know. So that's one of the great things I love when people come. Oh my god, that was so awesome because I've learned so much about myself. It's not I'm not teaching them anything. All I'm doing is they're learning from themselves, and yeah. that's one of the really big things I love about the events. And it just shows people that they are capable of so much more than they ever thought possible. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think it's such a big part of. Um, helping to develop further people's core values as well. And I think mm. something that I really took away from what Mick said in our episode, um, in life, in Spartan, in endurance, kind of it works for everything, is to not focus on the end. So to not be like, okay, this is the start of a four-hour event. To just focus on each task or each objective until it's completed and then move on to the next thing. Don't worry about the end goal. Just kind of focus on the here and now. Um, it's not going to help you to think about what's going to happen as you near the end of the four hours or the 12 hours or the 24 hours. Um, and it will only do a detriment to you to allow yourself to focus on that. So I think that that was really great. And I, I think, look, everything that both you and Mick have had to say about extreme endurance and look, I look forward to being able to do my first four hour at some point in the future, I will not be there for the extreme endurance weekend because uh, that is my birthday and I will be doing uh, really? my own form of extreme endurance, uh, but in a much more medieval sense. Um, so I will not be there, but the next one I will, unfortunately I did injure myself during my first race uh, on the Gold Coast last week. So I was not able to do mm -hmm. the four hour hurricane heat in the Gold Coast, but we will talk about that more in a bonus episode that we have coming up. We will debrief on my event. Just a couple of things. Um, I recommend you bring extra dry clothes because hurricane heat, four, 12 and 24 goes ahead, rain, hail, shine, tsunami, hurricane, whatever. Um, being that it actually started in the Hurricane Irene in the US. Um, and just remember that there is a two hour break between the four and the 12 hour and a four hour break between the 12 and the 24. So be prepared to eat, 
drink, check your gear and sleep. You know, you, you, that's what you're going to need to do. You have to make sure you're going to do that. Otherwise, you won't last. And we want you to last because in Italy, there was eight um, eight storm chasers who finished the for four and the 12 and the 24. And we said to them at the time that Australians are harder. We want more than eight finishing all three. So that means we need more people to register for the 12 and more people to register for the 24 because the 24 is the only one on the continent this year. And I don't think we're running another 12 hour this year either. So it's the last opportunity. If it's the first opportunity you've had, it's the only opportunity you've got. You can always do a four at Fiji to get your trifecta, but the 12 and 24, you need to be in Central Coast, five, six, seven July. Be there or I guess be somewhere else. Yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to be here and to chat with me further about it today. Um, for all of you listening, all the information on the Endurance Weekend will be in the description down below, as well as a link to uh, my feedback form for Spartan Down Under that I would highly appreciate if you would take the time to fill out. It shouldn't take more than one to two minutes to do. Don't forget to like, comment and rate the podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Follow us at Spartan Down Under Podcast for all the updates on upcoming episodes. And until next time, Warriors, keep conquering challenges and we'll see you then.